story time about how I got caught skipping school almost every day of my senior year. So our school had just started this new thing where you fill out all your contact information online. And my dad was like, okay, yeah, just fill yours out. And it pretty much was who can pick you up, who can make early dismissals for you, who they can call if you're in trouble. Well, I decided to be a sneaky little bastard and put my boyfriend in for every single one of those contacts. I would start school around 7.30 a.m. And I would go to the nurse's office at like 9 a.m. And she would call and my boyfriend would act like my dad and be like, okay, yeah, just let her drive home. Well, my guidance counselor noticed after about three months of me never being at school. So she called the number hoping to speak to my dad. But instead, she got my boyfriend. And he just thought it was a random person, so he didn't act like my dad. Because neither of us knew. Like for part two. Okay, part two. Okay, so pretty much what happened after that is she called and, like, she found out that it wasn't my dad. And then she went digging and, like, she, like, called my sister to the office and she was like, what's your dad's phone number? And my sister was like, why? Like, don't you guys have it already? And I also put the same numbers for my sisters so that way in case this day came, then, you know, it wouldn't look suspicious. Well, I don't know what she threatened my sister with, but she scared the hell out of her, so she gave her my dad's number. And so my sister told me whenever she got home, so I went to school the next day. And it was like a surprise party whenever I walked in the office. The dean was there, the principal was there, and my guidance counselor. So I got in trouble and then they were like, oh, we're calling your dad. So what did I do? I left before they called him. Extremely toxic best friend story time. So when I was in eighth grade, there was this boy. And this boy would go around telling almost every girl that he liked her. And I was one of those girls. And he would do stuff with all of us. And there were like 11 of us. So we all hated each other. Especially this one girl, and we're gonna call her Abby. And every time we saw each other, we would be super mean to each other. Well, a year passed, we stopped talking to this kid. And I bumped into her at homecoming and basically apologized. So after that, we became best friends. And everything was good until every time I told her about a guy, she would start talking to them. Like this one boy that I was Snapchatting and talking to, she accidentally sent nudes to him and said, oh, sorry, I meant to send them to my boyfriend. So then she called one of my other best friends and said, no, it actually wasn't an accident. And of course he told me because he was my best friend. So I was like, whatever, and stopped talking to the boy. And she did it again, like for part two. extremely toxic best friend part two so pretty much her excuse for that was oh well he said that he was gonna leak my nudes if um i didn't send him them again which was a lie because literally half the school already had her nudes so then i started talking to this other boy and he lived like right down the street from her so she was like if you want to go to his house you can and i was like are you sure and she said yeah just go tell my mom and I was like, oh, okay. So I went and told her mom where I was going and went over his house. So I walked back to her house and she literally locked me out. Like her mom had to come open the door for me to let me in. And she was like, oh, it's a good thing you came back when you did. Because I was going to drive you home now and tell your dad everything that you did. And she goes, I don't think you guys should be together because you're unexperienced. And she would always tell me how he flirts with her all the time. So after our friendship ended, she goes, I just felt like it was always a competition between me and you. Story time about my toxic ex-boyfriend that I met in therapy. Little background information. I was a part of this therapy group where you would go every week and talk about your feelings. Well, I saw this really cute kid, so I wrote down my Snapchat and gave it to him. He added me back and then we started dating like a week later. And for the first two or three months, everything was going smooth. And then he became really toxic and controlling. Like he would always go through my phone. And any guy that I had a streak with, he would accuse me of cheating on him with them. And it got to the point where he was literally so clingy. Like every second of every day he wanted to FaceTime, he had to be talking to me. I had to have my location on. And I would explain to him that I needed my space. But he literally just did not get the hint. 
So by this point, we were literally on and off all the time. And anytime that I broke up with him, I would block him because I didn't want to think about him. But he started calling my parents and complaining about me. So they blocked him. And then he tried being friends with my brother to get to me. Welcome back to another toxic best friend story time. A little background information. I was friends with this girl since elementary school. And we had a really good friendship until we got into high school. Like we always got along, never fought over boys. Well, during our freshman year, this new boy started at our school. Well, I started talking to him. And after a month of still talking to him, my best friend goes, I don't think you should talk to him. He talks to a lot of girls. And because she was my best friend, I didn't think she would lie about that. I believed her and I stopped talking to him. Well, that weekend, I went over her house. And when I walked in her room, she goes, oh, say hi. And who else is on the phone but the boy she told me not to talk to? So after they got off the phone, I was like, let me guess, you told me to stop talking to him because you liked him. And she goes, yeah, I just knew that if I told you I liked him, you wouldn't stop talking to him. So that night, we went to a party and he was there. And things started to go south, like for part two. Part two to my most recent toxic best friend story time. Little background information. I told him the reason why I didn't want to talk anymore was because I just didn't want a relationship. So we get to the party and him and his friends were there. So she went over to them. And I went and talked to other people because I just didn't want it to be awkward. Well, an hour later, we all met up again. And I started having a conversation with him. Well, I guess my best friend didn't like that. So she started embarrassing me in front of everybody. So she starts talking about how my clothes don't fit me right and I look like a blah. And how my boobs are so much smaller than hers. And how I don't have an ass. Literally in front of everybody just embarrassing herself. And me. So after that, she went to the bathroom to throw up because she had way too much to drink. And him and I started talking. And he was like, why wouldn't you just tell me that you didn't like me? And I was like, what do you mean? I just didn't want a relationship. He goes, oh, well, she just told me that you like somebody else. So that was the last draw and I just left her at the party. Toxic ex-boyfriend story time. So I was a junior in high school and I had just gotten out of a four-year relationship with this one guy. Well, I started to see him date around so I thought I should do the same. I started dating this new guy who was known as the biggest player. Since I just got out of a long-term relationship, we decided to take things slow. We both went to different schools. So we both had separate proms. And of course we both asked each other. So his prom came around first. So we got a shore house with his friends. And before we left, he bought me two dozen roses. This man has never bought me anything. And my mom was like, hmm, that's strange. I know exactly what he's trying to do with you. I now see that that may have been a warning. But did I listen? No. After prom, we went to the shore house and he tried to make it happen. I said no. The next morning, we both left. It was a Saturday because I had dance and he had baseball practice. He went back to the shore house that night and I didn't hear from him all weekend, like for part two. Part two because y'all are impatient and gotta go to sleep. So I didn't hear from him all weekend, but I left my blanket there and I texted him so he wouldn't forget it. And he was like, okay, yeah, I'll drop it off and we can hang out because I haven't seen you. And then he says that he apparently spilt beer all over it, so he had to wash it. And everything was good until my prom. So we went and he was acting extremely weird and super distant. So that's when I kind of knew that something was up. I didn't have a shore house for my prom, but he was like best friends with all the senior girls who went to my school. So of course they invited him and we went. And then I saw all over social media that there were pictures of him with his ex holding hands and hanging all over each other at the beach. So I had work that night and I just so happened to work with his best friend. And I told him about how he was being super distant and how I saw all those pictures all over social media. And he was like, yeah, we never spilt beer on your blanket that night. He was actually with his ex and they did it on the blanket. Moral of the story, don't date the guy who's named a player because it's probably for a reason. Story time about how I was the side chick. So it was my freshman year and I had just moved to a new school. And I live next to this senior boy. You know, the one that thinks you're good enough to do stuff with but not good enough to date? Yeah, that one. Well, we both were on the same bus and I thought he was really cute so I asked him for his Snapchat. And I got it. So we started talking a lot and we would always talk about me sneaking over his house because my parents were super strict. So homecoming night, I saw him grinding with this girl, but I didn't exactly think anything of it because literally everybody was just being passed around. 
Well, I went home after and at like 2 in the morning, I got a text from him saying to come over. So I went over there, we did the dirty. And then I started to go over there almost every other night. At 2 in the morning? And there was this one girl that I got really close with. And I told her all about the situation, but I didn't tell her till like 3 months after it was happening. Because he told me not to tell anybody, of course. And she goes, you know he has a girlfriend, right? So I felt really bad and confronted him, like for part 2. Part two of me being the side chick. So that night he had asked me to come over again and I went over there, but it's not what you think it was for. I got over there and I was like, when were you gonna tell me you had a girlfriend? Literally this comment made me wanna throw up. He goes, what do you mean? I thought you knew. So I was like, no, I actually didn't. And he goes, so does that mean you don't wanna come over anymore? He goes, I really liked you and I was gonna break up with my girlfriend for you. Which I know this is so bad, but that made me happy because I had the biggest crush on him. But then I just left. And the girl that he was dating was a senior. And I asked my friend for her Snapchat so I could Snapchat her. So I did and I told her everything that was going on. And somehow it got flipped around on me. Her saying that I was obsessed with her boyfriend. And then she got the nudes that I sent her boyfriend. And sent them around the whole school. My new school. Moral of the story, if he says he's single, make sure he's actually single.